Hi, in this video we're going to start talking about section 12-2. Section 12-2 is about vectors, which are a major component of this course. You'll see them again very heavily in chapter 16. So feel free to return to this section as needed. So why are vectors useful to us? The idea of vectors, the reason they're useful, is because most physical quantities, or a lot of physical quantities at least, have both a kind of a speed and a direction. Obviously, I'm using speed as an example. If you remember from calculus AB or Calc 1, speed was the magnitude of velocity. But in the real world, I could be traveling that velocity, that speed, in any number of directions. So with vectors, we're more able to describe what's going on in terms of the velocity function or in terms of lots of other situations. So we'll give a brief definition. A vector is an object with both magnitude and direction. So we want to make sure we define magnitude. So the magnitude of a vector will be its, its length is the most common interpretation. Uh, the size, but size is just a synonym for magnitude. Maybe an amount we're associating with it or a speed. If I'm going to give a specific example. So the magnitude might be something like speed, like I was driving 60 miles per hour. But again, no one ever just says I was driving 60 miles per hour in terms of telling people where they traveled. They would tell you a direction. I traveled 60 miles per hour north or east or north by northwest. If I was in a plane, I would not I would need to know the three-dimensional vector is the idea. Okay? So with that word length, I want to say a really important thing is that vectors will all have an initial point and a terminal point. So what that means is they will start somewhere and end somewhere. This means the natural geometric representation the natural geometric representation is an arrow okay so for example we would have some sort of initial point a some sort of final point b but again these vectors have a direction to them so it matters we're going from a to b so you need to put arrows on your vector it's looking ugly, so I'm just going to redraw it. Be something like that. We don't really need to put a dot at B's location. GeoGebra would. GeoGebra would. So one thing to point out that this is not a ray. We are not saying this goes on indefinitely. I'll put the dot here just to be clear. This is a vector that's stopping at B. Okay, this B is a stopping point. B is the terminal point. And A would be the initial point. So again, the arrow does not mean we go on it forever, like it did with a ray or with a line. What the arrow means is that was the direction we traveled. Our notation would reflect, we would name it like a vector V, V for vector. We have a little hat on top of the V. 
It's like a half arrow. You can draw the full arrow if you want. The book would use bold letters, but that's hard to write. Some, some math books end up using a dot, but in this course, it's really common to use a, a half hook like that. We would say it starts from A and goes to B, okay? The order matters. The order you label those points matters because again, the arrow is only going one way. If you remember the notation you would use for a line in geometry, it would have an arrow on both sides usually, or no arrows at all. It's also common. Um, it doesn't have to go up and to the right. We could have a vector starting from C and going to D. What would that be called? That would be called vector C, D. Okay. Maybe you would give it a name like W because V has already been used. You could also call it V2. So one more time, the order of the letters matters. And this is what we're talking about. We're talking about vectors that go one way or the other. I could even go like straight up or straight down. It doesn't really matter. Any direction is possible. And obviously right now we're talking about 2D vectors. It can get a little more interesting than that. A couple things to point out here. We can multiply by constants. The constants we'll call them scalars. And it's going to be really clear why we're calling them scalars. This would change the length. It changes the length. It can change the length. Let's say can change the length of the vector. And this is what we mean by scales. It's that kind of scales. Like when I'm going to scale up an image by a factor of two, I'm scaling the lengths of the vectors by two. It's another use of this kind of idea. A lot of fancy drawing software, fancy art software uses vector images. And multiplying by scalars can also reverse the direction. So what's an example of that? We're talking about, if I start off with a vector like V, what would 3V look like? Well, 3V is going to have one length of V, then another length of V, then a third length of V. It's like three V's stacked on themselves in the same direction. It's supposed to have the same direction. I'm gonna try it a little better. A little bit further maybe. And right, we're picturing it, it's three times as long in the same direction. Three times as long. The same direction is what I'm trying to draw. So it really doesn't matter if you copy the exact same slope, let's say, of V, but it would have the same exact direction. Sorry, it doesn't matter if you copy the same slope as the vector V I draw, well, I drew. What matters is that your copy of V and your copy of 3V have the same direction, have the same slope, but 3V is three times as long. What would negative V look like? So that negative scalar is going to reverse the direction. So V went like this. I'm still a little off my slope. One more try. If V went like this, I think that's too shallow, but we're just going to stick with it. If V went in that direction I drew it in, the negative V would reverse it like that. We'll just do one more example, and you should try this one out. What about negative 3 fourths V? 
You should think will it be in the same direction or the opposite direction. And then what's that three fourths going to do? Bigger or smaller? We're definitely going to go in the opposite direction. And we should be smaller than the vector we started. It's like that. Okay. So we should know what these scalars can do. They can lengthen the vector. They can reverse the direction of the vector. They can't ever change it more dramatically. They can't ever like rotate the vector, never do that. And so what this leaves us with is a important fact, a really important fact, is that scalar multiples, we're gonna write it down, I've said this a few times, are parallel, always. And it's going to be actually the reverse is true too. Once we have a little more technology on the table, we'll be able to say that I can tell if two vectors are parallel if by showing that they're scalar multiples of each other or scalar multiples of the same vector. Let's talk about adding and subtracting. Now, if you're having a hard time visualizing what's going on on this page, I will say that most of the vector work we do here will be numerical, but you should always be able to relate it back to a spatial idea if you're understanding what's going on. So if you struggle with your spatial intelligence, just try to take a deep breath. This won't be that bad. So the idea here is that we have a vector V and we have a vector W. Okay, so W is going straight to the right. And the question is, what should V plus W look like? So when we're adding two vectors, we're going to arrange a lot of different words for this tip to tail. And then connect V's initial point. to W's terminal. If you're saying like, what? Uh, so I'd have V and then I'm going to connect the tip of V to the tail of W. Maybe that's a little longer than what I started with. Okay. So there's W, there's V, and then I'm going to start from V's beginning and end at W's beginning. And that vector is V plus W. Okay. One common question would be, what about W plus V? Specifically, is this equal to V plus W? Is vector addition commutative? And the answer is yes. And there's a nice geometric proof of this. If I take my same picture where I had V, I know the vectors are probably changing slightly each time, but we're just going to live with it. If this is meant to represent V plus W, Then what if I did W first and then V? So that would be W plus V. And notice that if you followed that path, you would end up on the same exact ending point. So you'd have the same starting point and the same ending point. We're talking about the same vector here. And that analogy of them being paths can be very helpful. That if I'm doing vector addition, what I'm really doing is walking down a path given by the first vector, then the second vector. And as I just showed, commutativity doesn't matter. The order doesn't matter. The order you're adding doesn't matter. 
This is tech, sometimes called the parallelogram law or the parallelogram proof. That's what will keep everything in sync. So for subtraction, what about V minus W? So we're going to recast this as addition, just like you would in a more sophisticated understanding of numbers, like when you learn it in algebra, what's X minus Y? You can write that as X plus negative Y. Sometimes that's helpful. For vectors, it's really helpful when we're trying to define this operation. So again, if I had V and I had W, what we're saying, we don't know exactly what to do with subtracting them. So what instead I'll do is I'll find out negative W would be the same as W just going in the opposite direction. And so if I was doing V, go up, it's a little too sharp. And then I would go opposite W. So I want to write V on the other side. I would go opposite W. And I would connect the, those two, the start and the end, and that would be V minus W. Okay, so geometrically, it's not that bad. Notice that here, the order really would matter. So please be careful about that. All right, so that's it for the geometry. In the next lesson, we'll get a little more specific, a little more numerical. Thanks for watching.